Hello everyone, this is Gally and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Dragons. Today we're going to learn how to shade a dragon or how to paint one. This time I grabbed one of my old liners. It's a simple design, but I want you to see the way I color at least is just my way. That doesn't mean that everybody has to do it this way. I'm just gonna show you what I do to color my dragons or I don't know how to shade them. So what I do first is I grab my liner. It probably looks like this. I don't know. You have a sketch or you're drawing and it has a white background and you want to draw um, beneath the lines, not on top of them, right? In case you have this sketched and scanned and not just drawn on top of a transparent background in Photoshop, you can choose to put this on multiply. So I have my background layer. I have my lines right here. I will rename them. Dun, okay. So they're just lines with, as you can see, a white background. So you cannot see my underneath color, my background. For that, you click multiply. And that way you can see the underneath. It's like it becomes transparent except the lines stay there. So what I've done is I colored underneath the lines and you can name this color. And I clicked this, which locks it. Okay, it transparent pixels. So it locks the other pixels outside. I've showed this in another video. If you don't have Photoshop, it's okay. It certain different work, um, work programs like, I don't know, Paint Tool Sci or any other you can find, they work similarly. So if you block this, for example, you cannot draw outside the lines. And that's great because it helps me to not go outside. There are many methods to coloring. There are many different ways to go around this, but I'm, I'm gonna show you mine, teach you what I do. So after I have my base color, I click on a new layer. I click the Alt button or option in Mac and once this thing appears you click it you see you click it on top of it so it's joining these two together now that it's joined you can draw on top of the color layer without going outside so that, what I will do first is draw the dark side the shadows and grab a different brush you can use any brush you want that's no problem. Find one you're comfortable with. I have too many. So I'm just gonna find one that suits me. That is in the middle of my brushes, but I can never seem to find again. La 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 la. Okay, well, I, I'll use this one. Okay, so now you have this. You want to click multiply again. And as you'll see, your color will go very dark. You can go gray, you can go, well, any other color you choose, but I will choose a darker color this time. So first you have to decide where the light is coming from. In my sketch, I chose a light will come from here, from the top part, here. Like it's coming this way, right? So if my light is coming this way, the shadows will be underneath this side. I did a, a wrong, job in the shadowing of the liner because I was hurrying along so if you can help me find the mistakes I'll tell you where they are here so I had the light coming from here but it, the shadow is here you see that's wrong so you can either erase the shadows you made in your liner I suggest you don't do shadows in the liner unless they are very accurate because this happens, like you have it wrong and then you have to correct it. So yeah, that was just an example of an all liner so you could see how to correct it. So I, I am erasing right now in the liner the wrong shadows I've placed before. But that's all right. We don't need to do it all the way. So once you have your 
layer in multiply, multiply, sorry, multiplayer, haha. Okay, you can start like choosing where your shadow will fall. So the darkest part of your shadow should fall where the light is not hitting it. So we're gonna put the shadows, the darkest shadows where the light will not be. Okay, so we're imagining it's seating it from this side. And it will look something like this. This is the darkest shadow, okay? Meaning that the other shadows we're gonna put, they're not gonna look that bad. So again, we create a new layer here and click Alt again and bind it to the other one, just like this. Once you have that, stick it to normal, that's fine. And you can click Alt again to catch one of the colors. I will suggest one in the middle between this and this. This will be our normal shadows. This is between the darkest one and the lightest one. So it will look like this, because not everything is that shadowy. This is our normal shadow. You can cover everything actually, because we're gonna do the light after. So try to follow where the muscles would be. If you don't know, use a reference. There's no shame in using that. Learn. And well, as you can see, there's a darkest shadow, then there's a lighter shadow. And then on top of that, another layer linked to the other one. You can use a lighter color, maybe even put it a little blue or another different shade. This one is normal as well, but we're going to name them so simpler. So you have your base color, which will be called base color instead. Okay, this is the dark shadows. This would be normal shadow. This one will be the light. Okay, light will stick to normal and it will like define where the light is hitting this dragon. Follow the shapes of the head, like the horns, the nose, the feet. And you can use many different tones to do, go darker or lighter, for example, white, maybe a different type of purple. Don't be afraid of using different colors. Always stick to your shadow and light source. Because if you go and shade something that's not correct, it will look different, like it will look unreal and flat instead of looking 3D. Okay, so now we have the light. And there's another thing called reflected light. Or bouncing light. That means that even in the darkest shadow, like here, like what we have here, let's go even darker. Here, no, forget that. So, okay, we have our darkest, darkest color here. What we want to do with the reflected light, either have it in normal or put it in a lighter setting, but for now, I'm going to show you just how it looks. So you can zoom in. And what happens with reflecting light is that it bounces off in the darkest places of the figure. Like if you have the darkest shadow, it will reflect on it. It's easier to do on a sphere, but I'm just trying to show you. So it will bounce off, sorry, the darkest places. 
So it will give like a, the illusion that your dragon is, is popping out of the screen. This is just a very simplified coloring. If you take a longer time to do this, it will be even better because that's called rendering. If I render this right now, we will never finish. So you can see the base, it's understandable. So this is how your dragon will look like if you have shadows. So you started with the dark shadows, which are multiply setting. It could also be a normal setting, that's all right. But to make it darker, I choose multiply. Then on top of that, we get normal shadows. Help us to give form to our figure. Always follow the forms. On top of that, we have the light. And on top of the light, we have reflected light. It could be in a different order, but for me, it works this way. So if you want to have different colors, you can edit them. And that's for a different video. But for now, this is how you shade a dragon. And we're going to put some scales on our dragon. Again, anchor your new layer to the one on the bottom, which be reflected light. Could also be an overlay and a screen. Play around with them, those layer styles. They're really awesome. So I'm going to find a scale brush or something. I have so many. Okay, so I have one here. And I'm just going to play around with it. Usually I will edit the brush to make it look 3D because this looks a little flat. You can go to different layer settings as well and play around. Find out something that you like and use it to your advantage. Remember not to just like plaster the scales there and just leave them there because it looks flat. Try to erase some of them if you don't like them. Give them shape. Some people even go to layer effects just like this. And they choose drop shadow or inner shadow. Makes them pop. You can transform them, give them shapes. This looks flat, so you can erase some. I don't know, play around with your textures. And if you want a background that's a different color, just create some background with your own brushes or any brushes that you have. Try to choose a color that's in contrast to what you're using. And keep in mind that you still have a light source. So if your light, if you did this, probably would make no sense because now the light is coming from here instead of here. So always have that in mind, that if you have a background, try to make it make sense. Okay, so it's something like this, it looks better. Here you can add more details, you can refine your drawing, you can even draw on top of the lines. Just go on top of the line layer, zoom in, grab a different brush. And for example, I want this to be lighter. I will draw on top of it. Like this. That way you can erase a line art without really erasing it. Ta-da! So you go ahead, play around. You see? Now you can play with the bottom one. So that's what I do with most of my drawings. It's a very simplified version, but it's enough to help you out. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment. And if you liked and enjoyed, please share, because I make new videos every week, if possible. So that's all for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Next video will come soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.